in Memphis. This is News Channel 3 at 5. Tracking the latest on the coronavirus outbreak, including additional deaths in our community. Welcome home again tonight. I'm Greg Hurst. We're taking a look at the numbers first at five. In Shelby County, a nearly 1,700 people have been infected with COVID-19, and sadly, three more people have died from it. That brings the county's death toll to 35. DeSoto County, Mississippi is reporting 213 cases, and Crittenden County, Arkansas, has 127. On the state level, Tennessee is approaching 6,600 cases, 142 deaths. Arkansas has almost 1,700 infections, and Mississippi, nearly 3,800. 140 people have died in Mississippi. A coronavirus outbreak at a long-term care facility has left three people dead. The Shelby County Health Department confirms the deaths at the village of Germantown, a retirement community on Poplar. Two other residents and four employees have also tested positive. Seven other care facilities in Shelby County are also reporting COVID-19 infections. Mississippi's governor is loosening some restrictions, hoping to help small businesses. Governor Tate Reeves says it's still not safe to reopen the state completely, and he extended the stay-at-home order to include next week. However, people will be allowed to make drive-through, curbside, or delivery purchases from non-essential businesses. We don't want to waste that effort. We don't want to waste that sacrifice that people have made over the last few weeks. It has been nearly a month since Mayor Jim Strickland issued a stay-at-home order. Now a newly formed task force will begin discussions for how and when to reopen local businesses. As WREG's Janae Lewis explains, members say it's not something that will happen overnight. There's no denying the impact of coronavirus on our local economy. As conversations about reopening begin, doctors urge caution. We need to be looking at uh, healthcare benchmarks, benchmarks which will tell us that we're re ready to open. So, such as uh, looking at a steady decline in the number of cases, uh, looking at the hospital capacity, looking at the testing uh, and our capacity for testing, and lastly, our capacity to do contact tracing. A new task force will provide input on that from the state's largest four metro areas. For the four metros to get together and have a conversation, uh, it brings alignment, which is so critically important at this difficult time. Task force members say it's also important for people to manage expectations for life after reopening. Even when we reopen, we're still going to be social distancing. We're still going to be wearing masks. We're still going to be doing things to protect ourselves and to protect other people. Understanding this will happen in phases over time as we hit those benchmarks, keeping everyone's well-being at the forefront. Everybody understands that and everybody wants to get us there. And we're going to get there. Uh, it's, but we're going to get there in a responsible way that, as I said, doesn't undo what we've done and doesn't put people at risk. Reporting in Memphis, Janae Lewis, WREG News Channel 3. No, we don't want to go back. We want to keep moving forward. Now, the task force has its first meeting next week and also includes members from the Greater Memphis Chamber and Memphis Tourism. Heading into the weekend, there is uncertainty tonight over the best steps to fight the coronavirus. One question is, will a stalemate in Washington continue to hold up new funding? White House officials want more money for the small business loan program, but congressional Democrats are pushing for more funding for health care workers and other areas. We've also proposed hand in hand with that $100 billion for health care for our hospitals, which are the front line here, and $30 billion for a testing program. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says negotiations will continue through the weekend. Memphis churches are coming together tonight, putting faith into action. Church volunteers are taking food and supplies right to the doorsteps of those recovering from COVID-19. WRG's Jarita Patterson has details on this community-wide collaboration. Memphis churches ministering to the sick and shut in in a new way because of new challenges with COVID-19. Reverend Rufus Smith IV is senior pastor at Hope Church. He says while looking to health experts for information, they're also getting guidance from a higher power. Faith leaders coming together and covenanting to um, take care of by delivering um, food, 
groceries and critical supplies to those persons who test positive for the coronavirus. Hope Church joining forces with the Church Health Center here inside the concourse and the Catholic Diocese, to name a few, delivering supplies to those in need. Quite frankly, particularly in some of our more vulnerable communities, uh, the church is the most trusted resource. This collaboration is personal for Reverend Eli Morris, who recently recovered from COVID-19. He shared with us his fight against the infection and fear of the unknown. But you know, there's times in the quietness of your own heart where it's frightening uh, in the middle of the night or um, uh, you, you, you wonder uh, how this is going to play out. In the end, it was faith over fear. The churches say by coming together, they're offering hope to those in need. And they say by offering this relief, those most vulnerable can really focus on recovering. Putting faith into action to protect yourself and your family. You're not stuck at home. You're safe at home. And you make others safe. Reporting in Memphis, Jarita Patterson, WREG News Channel 3. Uh, yes, indeed. Faith over fear. And if you are recovering from the coronavirus and are in need of help, we have more information on WREG.com on how you can have food and other supplies delivered at no charge. There's also information right there at that same spot on ways to donate. All right, back to our COVID-19 coverage in just a moment. But first, for those of you still keeping track, it is Friday. The weekend has arrived. And what will that look like? Let's check in now with weather expert Tim Simpson for a first look at your forecast. Tim, it looks like some clouds are moving in. You know, Greg, so far this uh, weather forecast is right on track. We told you that today we would start with sunshine. I got the yard mode this morning. Clouds would move in this afternoon. I present the clouds and then we told you that you would see some light rainfall develop as well. Here's your light rainfall. So far, everything is right on schedule. Clouds have begun uh, basically working across our area with this light rainfall. Uh, accompanying a cold front. It's a weak frontal boundary, so we're not dealing with severe weather as it comes through, but it's more expansive as you get up toward Paducah, Lexington, Kentucky, and some of those areas. Look at temperatures behind this front. There's Fort Smith at 51, Little Rock 63. We're 69 here in Memphis and still some 70s across parts of our area. Oxford and Corinth both at 72 and 73. Clarksdale 73 degrees as well. So we are going to see these temperatures really cool down. Cloudy skies tonight. Showers developing, that's taking place as we speak. Mostly sunny skies tomorrow. Storms on Sunday. Coming up, we'll check your weekend forecast, and I'll tell you exactly what to expect. Greg? All right, like the sound of that, we'll see you soon. Thank you, Tim. As you well know, the pandemic is causing pain and heartache all across the country, but we've discovered it's also bringing out the best in people. WRG Shea Arthur shows us how some generous Memphians are helping a man who lost his livelihood, then became the victim of crime. Scott Briggs is busy this Friday afternoon, mowing, maintaining yards in Cordova. I needed a way to make income. When the coronavirus pandemic hit Memphis, Briggs could no longer work as a bartender. So he got creative, always having a passion for taking care of his own yard he started laid off lawn care. Business exploded. Maybe this could be uh, something that I do coming up for the next year or two. But every good business venture always seems to come with a hurdle or two. Briggs out working at a Midtown home yesterday faced a big one. I took my equipment out of the truck like I usually do. I hid it behind some hedges by our front door. He continued about his work. I started mowing the backyard, realized I'd left my equipment up front. Just five minutes later, that was it. By the time I went up front, uh, my equipment was gone. Gone. Stolen. He had only been using this equipment for his new gig for a few weeks. And while I know it's not my fault, it's, you know, at my house, you know, and, and, and you're here helping me. And, and I just felt really, really bad. It Briggs had been working on Tammy Sawyer's yard at the time of the theft. She's also a Shelby County commissioner. The two checked multiple surveillance cameras in the area. Unfortunately, none of them picked up the culprit. Filed an insurance claim, resigned ourselves to just taking a hit and trying to keep going. But Sawyer just couldn't let it go. She says she knew she had to do something. So she took to social media, posting about Scott's story. What happened? Asking people if perhaps they could spare a few bucks. 
I figured, you know, he would get like $200, $300 and that would help a little bit. That didn't happen. Something much bigger did. Within an hour, the equipment had been paid for with a surplus. More than $1,200 raised in an hour, bringing more meaning to the phrase we hear so often. We're all in this together. Especially in the time of COVID, Memphians are just coming together in so many amazing ways to take care of each other. And, and this was um, a great example of that. Shay Arthur, WREG News Channel 3. Oh, what a great story. Now, Briggs plans to donate the extra money to Elwood Shack, which is providing meals to healthcare workers. And he says his business is doing so well now, he's looking to hire some extra help. We wish him the best. Coming up, do you recognize this ring? It's from a Mid-South school, and now the FBI is trying to find its owner. We'll tell you how investigators hope it might be able to help them solve an 18-year-old cold case when we come back. 